Is a headache in back of the head a cause for concern? A headache in the back of the head is fairly common. Most of the time we experience headaches in the area of the forehead, the top front half of the upper scalp, and around one or both of the eyes. When a headache in the back of the head does occur, it seems ordinary and can be a daily occurrence. However, these chronic reoccurring headaches may be a sign of organ distress. How did we just go from a headache to organ dysfunction? Allow me to use this example. Maybe at some point in your life, you may have imbibed in a little bit too much alcohol, which resulted in a wall banger headache in the forehead and between the eyes, and maybe even a little light sensitivity. What's the liver in distress? We make the connection of alcohol, liver, headaches, and eyes, an event that is easily linked to the headache. That explains the eyes but what about the pain and the tension at the back of the head? Without an identifiable event or an indicator on the body, it's just easier to give the names like muscle tension headaches or the all-time favorite migraine, your food sensitivities, digestive issues, or any other health conditions involved in a distressed organ is seen as a separate issue from your headache, which brings into question if the distressed liver can cause a headache, why can't other organs refer pain to the head? The answer is, they can. We're just never taught the association. Because all of healthcare views pain through their specialty's perspective, there are never any objective indicators to identify specific links between the organs and the headaches until now. Let's start with a brief history and bring it to the present. In the mid-1920s, Dr. DeJarnet noticed when he was examining the back of patients' heads that he would consistently find painful fibers on each side. By the 1930s, he came to realize that no mention of occipital fibers was in any written work. And for the most part, even today, the only mention of occipital fibers occurs in association with sacro-occipital technique and then only on sites designed for doctors. There is essentially no information for the people who need it most. By the end of the 1930s, the doctor had mapped out the connection between the occipital fibers and the spinal vertebra. In turn, there is a corresponding organ associated with each of the thoracic and lumbar vertebra. When an organ is distressed, the neuroendoimmune suprasystem, which is the operating system which controls the organs, alters the blood flow to the muscles controlling the movement of the spinal vertebra. Examples of conditions that distress organs are insulin resistance, polycystic ovarian syndrome, food sensitivities, gut inflammation, constipation, etc. And when the body loses control of the vertebral movement and the organs are distressed, an occipital fiber reacts to defend your body against this insult. To describe how occipital fibers respond to organ distress, let us use the example of grapes growing on a vine. They start small, growing to their fullest ripeness, then began collapsing, followed by shrinking and shriveling where they become a raisin. The only difference being, the occipital fiber should return to the bud stage during optimal health. In cases where health is not restored, the occipital fiber does just as the grape and continues to grow and ripen, all the while being a source of pain and irritation on the back of your head with the distressed organ never being considered as a factor in your headaches. The occipital fibers become increasingly larger and swollen like a juicy grape during the acute phase of the organ distress. They are painful to touch. 
If the distress is not reversed, the occipital fiber will become overripe and start to soften as the body, just like the grapevine, that has become fatigued and no longer able to support the grape. The occipital fiber will start to collapse and shrink to the size of the original fiber. Often in these cases, the body attempts to compensate for the distressed organ as another organ attempts to pick up the slack for the distressed organ that is not doing its job. This is often where medical intervention gets involved. In severely chronic conditions, the occipital fiber can turn to bone and be a constant source of irritation and headaches. During the initial stages of organ distress, the fibers are small and painful to touch. They create a constant pull in the neck muscles. A distressed organ doesn't take a day off or may get aggravated by something you have eaten or after a stressful day. The longer the organ is distressed, the bigger and angrier these fibers can get. That is, until it gets sick and tired of being sick and tired. These fibers are dynamic and constantly changing. This may account for your shifting headache. Let's say you eat something that the immune mediators react to. The food will travel down your digestive tract, stomach, small intestine, and colon. The occipital fibers will shift areas and the referred pain from the distressed organs will shift as the food travels down the digestive tract. Another example is your menstrual cycle may be about to start. The occipital fibers respond and react as your body prepares for this monthly event. Again, the occipital fiber location and referred pain will react accordingly to the daily events in your life. When the body no longer has the energy and vitality to defend your health, the occipital fibers get tired of constantly having to respond to your body's needs. Now they start collapsing and getting spongy. They need help. They need stimulation. They feel better when rubbed or pressure is put on them. This stimulates the organs to work better. Symptomatically, you may temporarily feel better, but what you need is chiropractic manipulative reflex technique and lab testing to determine the best nutritional supplement support to rehabilitate and restore organ function. When the organ is happy and healthy, the headaches will not occur. Many patients have benefited from this approach. Even those with years of experience taking Imitrex or over-the-counter medications. You know, sometimes if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything gets treated as a nail. Maybe it's time for a fresh perspective. In answer to the original question, are headaches in the back of the head a cause for concern? The answer is yes, as they are associated with distressed organs. These so-called muscle tension headaches are often the first signs of dysfunction in your body. You should also be aware that for some healthcare professionals, they only know one word to describe headache, and that is migraines. Their only treatment option that they give you is to suppress the symptoms, which allows the organ dysfunction to continue. Those with true migraines have a leaky blood-brain barrier, which is caused by the inflammation associated with organ dysfunction. By prioritizing a treatment plan using occipital fiber analysis and lab testing, the window of treatment opportunity can be accessed to work in synergy with your body instead of using cleanses, detoxes, and elimination propagation treatments. The distressed organ can be targeted and supported to restore and rehabilitate the organ. This approach works with you as a unique individual with your own unique physiology, rather than the one-size-fits-all cleanses and detoxing, which just happens to require a properly functioning organ to be beneficial. If you're having constant headaches on the back of your head, you should be concerned. And for more information, call or contact this office. This is Dr. David Peterson, wishing you a happy, healthy day.